standing naked, holding an axe, next to the skeleton of his victim, the German police officer. That turned into a cannibal. In his cellar, in the highlands near Dresden, in eastern Germany. The Polish-born businessman, Wojciech Stempniu Ix, was murdered by his friend, Detlef Gunzel. While listening to rock music, Gunzel, hacked away at the body of his victim. For a bloody five hours, and the entire process, was caught on videotape. As for his pleasure, he had the last picture with his friend's skeleton, wholly naked, but holding the murder weapon. Later that day, Gunzel buried Stempniu Ix's remains, just outside his home. He then grilled the man's testicles and penis, and proudly ate all of it. It should be of no surprise, that many people, including one of the judges who presided over the case, linked Gunzel to Armin Mithras. In fact, both of these monsters began their meals by consuming the penises of their victims. Still, there are some key differences between the two men's films. Mivas filmed the entirety of their interaction, from the beginning to the end, which included, most importantly, Bernd Brandis's statement, that he gave his agreement verbally. However, Gunzel, did not begin shooting until he was getting ready to butcher his victim. The video, which depicts Gunzel slicing up stamp new axes, hanging corpse, while rock music plays in the background, it has been described as extremely terrible, and beyond imagination. But the fact, that both men, killed victims who had given their consent, and who were excited, about being consumed by another man, is perhaps, the most peculiar aspect of the case. The story started when Wojciech Stempniuk failed to return from a business trip on November 11, 2013. His fiance, a Russian woman residing in Hanover, called the local authorities to report him as a missing person. She believed he had been kidnapped and robbed. Investigators spent several months looking for Stempniuk before discovering that he was quite active on sick websites that were dedicated to bondage and torture. Under the alias Long Pig Hesla, he had spent a significant amount of time searching the internet for a person who would happily eat him. Stempniuk entertained macabre thoughts of being slaughtered and eaten, and he searched the internet for a year, before he found a willing predator to fulfill his desires. In one message that he sent in November 2012 to a different user, he inquired about a device in his home that was supposed to winch up his body after he was murdered. A second successful effort succeeded when he met up with a man who went by the name of Caligula and was eager to cut him off. The men found each other in October of 2013, and they stayed in heavy contact by email, text message, and telephone calls before finally scheduling the date of the deadly encounter for November 4th of that same year. Investigators then traced the calls that led them to a cabin in the mountains outside of Dresden. This cabin was located some 250 miles to the east. And Detlef Gunzel, a veteran of the police force and a father of three, was the cabin's owner. As a forensic detective for the state office, the fact that Gunzel was apprehended after committing only one murder is rather embarrassing. It had been 30 years since he joined the police, which meant that he had started off as an East German Bopo. Probably after the Berlin Wall came down and free enterprise was legalized in Saxony, he started a bed and breakfast business as a side hustle. The authorities were interested in what Gunzel had to say, so they went to the trailer to question him. After arriving at the location, Gunzel did not refute having met with Stempniu Ix. In point of fact, the cannibal officer divulged some bone-chilling information regarding the horrific events that occurred to the Polish victim. Nevertheless, the shocked officers were unwilling to believe the horrible tale. So he gave them a DVD that was five hours long and showed him dismembering, and disposing of the body. However, he also maintained that his victim expressed a desire to be killed. And he only complied with this demand, and his one dying wish. He also said that Stempniuix, had already hanged himself in the cellar, before Gunzel rushed in, and cut his throat. After that, he started the video and turned up the music volume. Then, to receive sexual excitement, he dismembered him, before burying the pieces of his body, in his garden. After that, he watched the film he created, to engage in sexually stimulating behavior. Even though the case had certain characteristics of cannibalism, there was no evidence that Gunzel actually dined on, his victim's body, other than his penis. 
After directing law enforcement to several locations surrounding his property, Gunzel was eventually taken into jail. Investigators couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the suspect consumed the victim, but some body parts were never found. The family of Wojciech Stemniewicz, who was murdered when he was 59 years old, retained attorneys who requested that Gunzel be sentenced to 15 years in prison. The woman who was Wojciech Stemniewicz's lover said that he never had a single fantasy about death and that the two of them had been making wedding arrangements weeks before he was killed. Later, Gunzel recanted a confession he'd made to authorities that he had slit Stemniewicz's throat. Also, since the body was in such bad condition, the investigators have been unable to figure out the cause of death. During the trial, a video showed Gunzel cutting up his victim's body while it was hanging from a hook, while wearing only his underpants. The video, which is 50 minutes long and portrays Gunzel dismembering the corpse while popular music plays in the background, has been described by attorneys as extremely awful and beyond belief. The defense, on the other hand, contends that the video demonstrates that Stemp Newix had his feet in constant contact with the ground which indicates that he could stop the strangulation if he had desired to do so. They asserted that the footage, which was played in front of the judges behind closed doors, provided conclusive evidence that the victim committed suicide by hanging himself. It is no surprise that a lot of people, including one of the judges who presided over the case, found him guilty of murder by suffocation and dismemberment. Following Gunzel's conviction for murder and disturbing a corpse, a court in Leipzig handed down a sentence of eight and a half years in prison as the punishment for this heinous crime. But the German Constitutional Court has overturned the conviction and ordered a new trial less than a week after he was taken into custody. The defense's argument that the victim committed suicide was never fully investigated, and neither was the rope that Stemp Newix was found hanging from. The video Gunzel made was played at trial, and at one point it showed him drenched in blood mutilating the corpse while he was saying, I never thought I would go this low. When the video was played, the defendant reportedly lost control of his emotions and told the judge presiding over the case that he was not a murderer despite having made a mistake. Even though the constitutional court ordered a retrial, there is the possibility that it could be counterproductive because the original sentence for murder was too light. As the victim clearly wanted to die and then be eaten, the first court that heard the case found that a life sentence was an excessively harsh punishment. Therefore, the former law enforcement officer who turned into a cannibal was given a prison sentence of eight and a half years. Compared to a system, this sentence doesn't mean much. But there was another similar case, maybe a decade earlier, and that case, is pretty much more disturbing. It all started in 2000, when Mivas posted an ad, on the Cannibal Cafe website that read, I am looking for a young, well-built male, aged 18 to 30 to slaughter. Several guys responded, one of whom was a man named Bernd Jürgen Brandis. Then in February 2001, the bisexual engineer sent a letter to Mivas, in which he expressed his willingness to be eaten, and asked him to send back, if he is only serious. Brandis was 43 years old at the time. They corresponded with each other via many lurid emails, discussing the optimal technique for him to be consumed, and the subsequent applications for his body. Even further, Brandis claimed that his skull would be perfect as an ashtray. Then, in March 2001, Brandis traveled to meet Mivas, in Amstetten. After having sex with Mivas, Brandis consumed many sleeping pills, a bottle of cough medicine, and some schnapps. Mivas then amputated Brandis' penis, so that the two of them, could eat it together. Mivas proceeded to fry it with a little garlic, and pepper, but burned it, meaning, it was not so nice to eat, but they ate it anyway. By that time, Brandis lost significant quantities of blood, and he spent the subsequent three hours, bleeding to death in the bathtub as Mivas read a book about Star Trek. After ten hours, when Brandis was still alive, Mivas stabbed him multiple times in the neck to end his suffering. And the cannibalism started up at that point. Mivas hung Brandis's lifeless body from a meat hook before chopping the flesh into chunks and grinding the bones into flour. He then consumed the dismembered body parts, 
over the next 10 months. By November 2002, Mivas was getting close to running out of Brandy's frozen flesh, so he put up another message looking for a victim. But this time, a suspicious Austrian student reported it to the authorities. And during a search of Mivas' home, law enforcement found 15 pounds of Brandy's flesh hidden inside pizza boxes in Mivas' freezer, the skull as an ashtray, and the video recording of the slaying. As soon as Mivas was arrested in 2002, he admitted to the crimes. Once, after searching through Mivas' computer to locate evidence, it took the police seven months to put together a case after they discovered the evidence. That's because they found thousands of photographs, depicting various forms of torture and pornography. He was then charged with murder in 2003. Possibly one of the most shocking aspects of this story is that in 2004, Mivas was found guilty of manslaughter, and was only sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. However, Mivas' sentence was appealed by prosecutors in Germany. And in 2005, a court determined that there should be a retrial. Their position was that he ought to have been found guilty of murder, rather than manslaughter, and given a life sentence. I think the fact, that anyone responded to the monster of Rottenborg, or the cannibal cop, online ad. That has to be the most perplexing aspect, of the many mysteries, surrounding those two cases. Don't respond to such ads, please. Take care, my friends and we will always be grateful for your incredible support.